Okay guys, so in today's video what we're going to be doing is a reptile room tour. I'm going to be going around all of my reptiles enclosures, giving you a brief overview of each of them, telling you how my reptiles have been going on over the past month, and talking about a bit of what I've got planned to do over the coming months. This is probably going to be quite a special reptile room tour for this year, because it's probably the last time that all of the reptiles are going to be fully awake. As it's autumn now, it's coming into sort of brumation season, and that means that Char especially is going to start noticing the shortening day lengths and going to want to be digging burrows and going to sleep and hibernating and so on. Um, so come the October reptile room tour, everything's going to be calming down. Now this is sad in the sense that like most of my collection, with the exception of Splat the Crested Gecko and the Lion Day Geckos, is going to be like completely asleep. But it is good in that I'm going to be able to tear down some of the electronics in these systems and get some new stuff. So in today's video I will be talking about my plans for doing that. But anyway, without any further introduction, I think we may as well just start with Char, because next month he's going to be going to sleep and all that, so let's have a look at him. Now if you follow me social media pages, you'll probably have seen that like Char's going into shed and that now. Um, and finally it's starting to come off. So it's coming off on his beard and his legs, and he looks kind of messy at the minute. But I am glad he's getting this shedding out of the way before brumation, because it's like kind of strange how infrequent bearded dragons shed to me. I mean, like snakes and stuff. Well, Red, my adult corn snake, still sheds every couple of months. Um, and then my adult leopard gecko and adult crested gecko shed like every month or something. But Char only sheds like once a year, which is really different. So like I say, I am noticing that Char is getting a little bit more sleepy now. He's still interested in his food and everything. In fact, the other day I managed to film a video all about feeding your bearded dragons, which will be out in a few weeks if you want to see that. Um, but he is still attacking his food all the same. But he isn't quite doing what he used to do, like in these videos from early on in the year. You'll have seen him like going round about his enclosure, bobbing his head and jumping at the glass and things. But he's really calmed down now. This is of course all to be expected, um, last year when I was going through it the first time I wasn't particularly um, in the know of what I was meant to be expecting to happen and we did end up taking in the vets um, but he was completely fine and all that, just brumating and so on and he's doing the same this year so nothing to worry about but anyway, Charles' setup is a 5x2x2 by by two foot um, bioactive enclosure um, the UVB lighting on it is an Arcadia Dragon Lamp which is a T5 UVB bulb with a 14% output um, and currently it is lit with a ceramic heat emitter, 50 watt DP projector and it's got a little 7 watt white python LED kit to provide a bit of visible light. Now I have mentioned before that I want to change out this heating rig because it is kind of old fashioned and it isn't stimulating enough for Char to get him basking properly so I am working out a solution to that. So that is one of those things that I will be upgrading over the coming months. Now it would only seem fitting that we move from this enclosure on my right to this enclosure on my left which houses my corn snake Red. Red is turning more and more out to be just an absolute legend of a corn snake. He's dead friendly and I can get him to come over just by like reaching in and tapping on the um, like front part of the enclosure, he'll always come over. He eats like an absolute boss all the time, you'll have seen from the feeding video that I did a short while ago. He just absolutely hammers any food and he is just a brilliant pet. His setup is going through a couple of changes after he goes in brumation as well. Um, these will probably be taking place in like late October to November time. Um, I am going to be replanting his setup because the plants that I've got for him are finally growing back after he abused them for a good long time by sitting on them and everything. Um, and then his UVB lighting, which is a 12% T8 bulb, um, that is staying there, that's all fine. Um, he's got a white python LED kit as well. Um, that's staying there, but like I've said in the past, I do want to change his ceramic heat emitter out to a DP projector. And of course, like most of the rest of my setups, it is a bioactive one, and as I do discuss in a video coming quite shortly, um, or in a couple of weeks or something, um, it is supposed to recreate a sort of woodland area from North America. Moving up a step, we've got the big boy Speckles. Um, Speckles is doing absolutely fine, but I am starting to notice that as well as Char, Speckles is starting to notice the um, change in seasons. He's spending a lot more time in his cool hide and he isn't quite as active. When food goes in, he still goes nuts. 
<laughs> I mean, if anybody's seen any of the videos I've done where we feed Speckles, he's a monster. Speckles' setup isn't going to be undergoing any changes when he goes into the deep sleep because I am happy with it. Um, it's three feet long, nearly two feet deep and nearly two feet tall. Um, it's a Viv Exotic Medium Maxi, I think it's called. Um, it's heated with an Arcadia Deep heat projector on a dimmer stat. Um, and the lighting is an Arcadia Pro T5 Shade Dweller unit as well as a two foot white Python LED kit. You've probably noticed by now that in the three setups Speckles is up there, um, that I do have white Python LED kits in all of them. And I kind of wish I didn't. Um, I actually got them to like increase visible lighting and stuff, um, alongside just the UVB lamps, which are skewed towards the UV end of the spectrum relative to what the sun's wavelengths are, um, that get down to the Earth's crust and so on. Um, so I put those in without going any more technical. Um, and then, like, a month later, Arcadia helpfully released the Arcadia Jungle Dawn LED bar, which is a much better solution than the White Python LED kit. Um, so, basically, I'm going to have to upgrade all of those at some point, which is probably going to cost a lot and mean I've got loads of White Python LED kits sat around, so that'll be fun. <laughs> and whilst Charm munches away on his um, weeds and stuff, um, I will talk about the new additions to the Reptile Room. Um, I think these were in the last Reptile Room tour we did, um, but I've had them for a full month now, a month today I've got them actually, and that is the Chinese Leopard Snakes. Now these snakes aren't kept very commonly in captivity and most people like haven't heard of them, but basically they're like an Asian equivalent to the corn snake that gets quite a bit smaller. They are still in quarantine, but they are doing really, really well. Um, and I am starting to notice more and more differences between the pair. So the male, Rusty, who's actually in shed at the minute, so I can't show you him because I don't want to disturb him or, disturb him or anything. Um, he's a lot bolder than, the, than his female counterpart, Chloe. Um, and he comes out whenever like I open the lid and stuff, expecting food. Um, and he is really quite bold as brass. Chloe, on the other hand, is really much more timid. Um, she's really inquisitive to be honest, she peeps her head out and looks, but if you get too close she always hides away. Now, on that note, um, I was actually like cleaning their enclosures out, you could probably tell they're cleaner than they were before, um, just making sure everything's spick and span and whatever. Um, and I took Chloe out and I had her in a little box, um, she was in a moist hide and I just left her in it. And then I went to lift her out and weigh her. Um, and she had like some moss stuck to her and I was just like gonna go and brush it off like and she actually bit me. This event was completely my fault to be honest because I'm used to handling red and like my other reptiles that are all used to being held and stuff. I haven't had like a reptile that doesn't want to be held like but can be tamed if you know what I mean um, like these Chinese leopard snakes in years and um, so I was kind of just like being overconfident with them and so on. Um, and when I went in to brush the sphagnum moss, I must have done it too quick or something and it frightened her. So I do kind of feel bad about that. I will also mention that if you want to learn more about this like not very well known species of snake, I've been making quite a lot of videos about them. So I'll chuck a link up in the top right hand corner of the screen right now. Um, and there you can find the playlist for all the videos I've made about them. You may be surprised to find out that even though these snakes are quite young, um, I am going to be um, brumating them the same as the rest of my animals that are out in the main reptile room, um, because they are a breeding project and I do want to cycle them, and they do apparently actually mature quite early at about 11 months of age. And of course, when they go into brumation, they will be having um, some upgrades done, and I am um, planning to do completely new setups for them, a bioactive one for Rusty, and something a little bit different for Chloe. Now, my crested gecko splat, um, its enclosure is looking really, really good at the minute. We, like, trimmed it down and stuff and fed splat and so on in a recent video I did, so I'll throw a link up to that if you want to see it. Um, but since that video, nothing's changed. The setup's looking good and I'm really happy with it. Um, and then Splat himself, he's just doing really well too. Later on in the season, Splat also does have some upgrades coming his way. Um, I want to change out some of the lighting, the UVB lighting I want to change, the heat lamp I am considering changing. 
Um, and I have been doing some experiments with Splat as well. So the Crested Gecko diet, I've been trying to feed him it dried without any water in to see how that goes, just as a little um, side experiment. And I will be making a video about the results very soon too. As ever though, Splat is just Splat. He's doing really well, he eats his food, he jumps around, he attacks me. Um, and there isn't much to say about him, so we may as well move on to the line day geckos. Their enclosure is a glass vivarium made by DMS Viveria. Um, Dale from DMS actually sent me this. Like, I had to pay for delivery and nothing else. Um, and I am, like, to review it, so I'm going to be doing that in a couple of weeks. Because I've tested it out in various ways over the past year, so I should be able to give quite a comprehensive review to it. Anyway, the geckos themselves are actually getting on really well at the minute. Um, they were bickering and stuff earlier in the season, but whilst they don't brew mate, they are sort of attuned to what's going on outside, um, and they will probably calm down a lot over the winter, give the female called Liana a chance to rest, and then next year I should, I should hopefully have some more successful clutches from her, um, rather than the infertile eggs that we got earlier on. They do still rather bicker over food and stuff, um, I'm feeding them twice a, twice a week at the minute, um, one feeding I'm giving them insects, whether that's fruit flies, mealworms, wax worms, wax moths, um, any sort of small insect they'll take, and then I am also doing one feeding a week of like a crested gecko diet, and in their circumstance they actually refuse to eat it with any water in, and I have to give it them as the powder, which is quite interesting. Like I say though, they are little buggers and if one of them's got like a mealworm hanging out of its mouth, the other one will like try and grab it off them and it's kind of interesting to watch them. Once again, I do have upgrades in store for these two. Um, the UVB lighting is a shade dweller unit and I don't think that's intense enough for them. So that's going to be moving over to Splat and these guys are going to be getting a 12% UV flood. Um, but the LED lighting for the plants is not going anywhere because I love those lights. Um, I did a review on those too, so if you want to see it, I'll chuck a link, link up again. Now last but not least, and next to the line day gecko enclosure, we are going to take a look at my fish tank this time round, because somebody wanted to see it um, and wanted me to make an update video on it, so I'll probably be doing that in the coming weeks, but just for now I thought I'd like insert it here. Um, and as you can see, my fish tank, which I've had for like nearly six years, I think, which is crazy. Um, I got it before I had any reptiles. Um, it's doing really well. Um, I changed the scape of it like last year, I think. Um, and it's got like Amazon swords going around in the back now, and it looks quite good. I also changed up the lighting so it's got fluval aqua skies rather than old T8 lighting now. Um, and it does look a lot better. And then, most recently of all, um, I did actually get like 15 cardinal tetras. I actually got given 16, which was cool because I got one free. Um, but I did already have like six in the tank. So I've got a relatively large shoal in that now and it is looking a lot better. As well in this tank, we do have a group of six bronze Corydoras, Corydoras Aeneas, the scientific name. Um, and I do also have my favorite fish, which is a bristle, blah, 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 which is a bristle-nosed catfish, um, and he just like hangs out on the glass all the time and never eats any of the algae, as you can probably see. But that's all right by me, because he looks cool. But anyway, if you would like to see more of this fish tank, then drop us a comment down in the comment section, and I'll know to film the update video sooner rather than later. So that brings us to the end of the video. Um, now I really hope you did enjoy seeing all the reptiles, and like I say, it's probably the last time this year that you're going to see them all properly up and about. I do expect that Char is going to get a lot more sleepy over the coming weeks, then Red and Speckles are going to follow suit, and probably the Chinese Leopard Snakes. But of course, as I've said, we do have lots of upgrades planned, so that should be interesting as it comes. As ever, if you do want to see more videos like this, then do subscribe to my channel and I will have more videos out for you soon. I'm uploading every week at the minute um, and I do have quite a lot of interesting stuff coming, as you can probably gather, so it would be a good time to subscribe if you like this stuff, if you don't, then. But anyway, I hope I'll see you in the next one and this is me for now. Bye guys! Oh my god, do you have to poo in every single video? Cha.